Hi everybody, it's Keith at INE. I had a, f a couple questions that came up and I thought to myself, you know, I don't think I'm ever going to make a video on IP addressing because there's so many out there already. But then I actually listened to a couple and I changed my mind. So this presentation right here, it assumes a couple of things. One, it assumes you know how to do decimal to binary conversion. It assumes that you know an IP address is 32 bits represented in decimal as one byte at a time separated by periods and the representation is in decimal because we're humans we have 10 digits that's probably why we did that one alright so if you know all those things let's jump into this the task here is asking which subnet does the host 10.192.0.1 with this mask where does it belong uh, what is the subnet it's on so let's imagine a PC it could be a, a Mac or a PC on a network now we know that a IP address is made up of two components this one IP address right here actually is hiding the information for two things it has part of that information is the network that's common to this PC and everybody else on it and part of that IP address is the actual host identifier on that network now the the, the magic that separates the network bits from the host bits is the mask and the mask is right here if a mask walked into a job interview and the interviewer said, Dear Mr. Mask, what do you do for a living? The mask would say, It's really clear what I do. I do one thing. I indicate which bits out of a 32 bit IP address, which of those bits are used for representing the network, those would be on the left, and which bits in that 32 bit IP address is identifying the actual host on the network, those would be the bits to the right. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Cedar, VLSM, doesn't matter. That's the job of the mask. So if we want to identify what is the actual network this PC is on based on its IP address that's already configured on it, we simply go to the mask and say, OK, Mr. Mask, how much of the first octet is being used for network bits? Well, 255 in binary is 8. That means all 8 bits of the first octet are being used for the network. That also means we could convert 10 into binary add up all the bits that are on from the IP address for those 8 bits, convert it back to decimal, and we'd have 10. Now, that's a little bit of a joke because you don't really need to convert it. The entire octet is being referenced by the mask that's saying it's part of the network address space. Next, we have 192. Now, 192 is a little bit iffy because the mask says I'm not using all 8 bits of the 192 that octet represented by 192 for network bits so that's the one we have to slice down here we're gonna slice out 192 so I'll put 192 there and that would be in binary 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 cool now gee which ones of these bits are, represent the network and which represent host bits that's the job of the mask so I'm gonna put the mask in blue and right here, let's put the mask down here of 240. And the mask would be in binary 11110000. One, 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 zero, 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 zero. And that's the mask. Now, what's the, jo what's the mask's job? Remember, is to identify which bits inside of a 32 bit IP address, which bits are being used to represent host ad network addressing versus host addressing. And what we do is we basically put a big wall right here that separates the network bits on the left from the host bits on the right and that's what the mask does and it has to be contiguous so you're not going to have a mask that has one 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 zero one 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 it's not going to skip any bits for the mask the mask is just indicating what which bits contiguous bits starting from the far left from the first octet working in this example to the second octet it basically says we're using the first four bits of this second octet for network address identification so what are the value of these bits from the host portion that are on and that will be your subnet ID so this bits on that's 128 plus 64 plus 0 plus 0 that's the end there's no more network bits so we simply bring down a value of 192 as our subnet and that became because the first four bits and they're used for subnetting are a value of 192 and we can we drive that happens to be that was the actual literal octet but it doesn't have to be that way if this was 193 for example 
these four bits would still be a value of 192. And the rest are all zeros. So the network this host is on is 10.192.0.0. Simple as that. What's the first host? 10.192.0.1. That's the first host in the subnet. Now I'd like to share with you some techniques to identify the ranges involved and the next subnet. In green, I'd like to talk about the next subnet. Now this subnet is 10.192. It's represented by 1100. If we were going to identify the next subnet, the next subnet, and I'll do that in green, would be 1101. And the secret is, you can take the least significant bit of the mask, say right in this example it's 16, and you could just add 16 to the current subnet and poof, you've got the next subnet. And if you want the subnet after that, you can just say add 16 again and again and again. The increments for your next subnet and the next subnet are always going to be the value of the least significant bit of the mask. Not the least significant bit that's on from some host, but the actual mask itself. So the reference subnet, the next subnet would be 10 dot, and it would be 192 plus 16, which I believe is 208. That's the next subnet. Now check this out. That's the next subnet, and I use it here with the keyword reference because using that we can cheat a little bit. This subnet 10.192.0.0 will never be higher than 10.208 because that's the next subnet. So if you want to calculate what the broadcast is, what the broadcast address is for the 10.192 network, it's going to be the next subnet minus one. That's it. So you calculate your next subnet as a reference point and say, well, my broadcast is going to be 10.207.255.255. So your broadcast of your subnet in question is always going to be the next subnet ID minus 1. And I'll let you work out the binary on all of that. That will be a good exercise. If you're comfortable with the binary already, fabulous. If you're not, you may want to pause and say, okay, if I do 208.00 in binary, and I take away one, what's that actually going to work out to? And you'll find out it's 207.255.255 if you go through the binary. So the broadcast is the reference minus one. The last host in the subnet in question is going to be your broadcast minus one, which is 10.207.255.254. So not that uh, not that that's gonna break the bank or change you know change the world dramatically, but my friends, if you're asked about any kind of a question about you know what's the range, what's the broadcast address, which hosts fit down this subnet, once you do this, check it out. For subnet 10.192, the first host is dot one, the last host is dot 254, the broadcast is 255, and the next subnet is 10.208. You've got all the information. And if you wanted to repeat that process for 208, what's the first host? It'd be 10.208.0.1. Uh, what would be the last host in the broadcast? Well, you calculate the reference next subnet. It'd be 208 plus 16, and then simply drop that by one for the broadcast of the previous subnet, drop it by one more for the last host. And as far as calculating the possible number of subnets and possible number of hosts, these formulas have been around forever. They're still around. Um, we have in this example four bits. It's a class A address, 10 network. We're stealing four bits above and beyond the default for subnetting. So 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So we could create 16 unique subnets. They would be subnet 0 all the way through subnet 240. And that would be 16 different combinations. Um, as far as how many hosts could live on each of those subnets, how many bits do we have left for hosts? We have four bits here from the second octet, and we have the entire third and entire fourth octet all available as host bits. So it'd be 2 to the power of 20. Don't have a calculator at the moment, but that's a bunch. Minus 2, because you can't use all 1s or all zeros um, as a host address. You know why you can't use all zeros or all 1s? It's because those identify the actual networks. That's why they're not used. Actually, the, the all zeros is the, is the network, and the all ones is the broadcast. So you can't use those as valid host IDs on your various subnets. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I wish you the best of luck in your studies in CCNA or wherever life takes you. Thanks, everybody.